Hi, and welcome back to Take 5 with Pelican Corp, where we explore some of the issues and challenges and solutions facing the damage prevention industry. Again, I have with me my colleague, Jason Manning. Hey. And also today with us is Andres Cruz. G'day, guys. How you going? So in this episode of Take 5 with Pelican Corp, uh, this is also a conversation that stemmed, or rather an issue that stemmed out of a, a conversation I had with Andres recently, where he talked about his experience in the rest of the world uh, helping with damage prevention and, and building damage prevention programs. And he mentioned something that's uh, maybe a little bit of a foreign concept here in the United States and uh, North America, a concept of silent assets. So I asked him to kind of come share his experience with Jason and I around this concept of silent assets, what they are, and how we can protect them within the April 1 framework. Uh, so as always, we've got a kind of a couple of different slides to make this easier. Um, and what I'm going to do is share the first slide here to kind of talk about uh, what a silent asset is not, which will help us kind of better frame what a silent asset is. <laughs> you like that approach, Jason? <laughs> I love it. That's Jason. a great way. All right, yeah, love it. So here's the, um, here's the first slide that we're going to show. And the basic concept here is to, just to show what, a, again, what a silent asset is not. Uh, we're all familiar with Able One protected assets, be it gas, electric, telecoms, water, what have you. These are all protected assets within the Able One system. They're all registered at the call center. So when we talk about what a silent asset is, these things are not that. They already have a protected uh, structure within the Able One process. So let's talk about now, uh, Jason, this next slide, is going to help us illustrate what a silent asset is. Yeah, that's great. And, and you know, these are, are very often things that people already have, and they just don't have as high of a profile uh, in kind of that 811 process as those other um, utilities. So we've got here represented, and these are just some examples, you know, heritage trees or perhaps sites of uh, historic or cultural importance. Um, we have some of the maybe uh, valuable assets that don't typically fall under the protection. Um, we're thinking here about you know smart parking meters, and of course there's environmentally sensitive areas. Now, um, the idea of protecting these uh, isn't just if you own them. Obviously, you don't own an environmentally sensitive area, uh, but a lot of times this is just as much about the asset owner uh, as it is about the excavator who needs uh, maybe some some. Uh, early warning of these things that might be uh, represent a, a challenge to their project. Um, so these are some of the things that we are are looking at when we talk about silent assets. And I'm going to throw it over to Andres and have him maybe explain to us some of the solutions that people have put in place uh, globally uh, to take care of some of these uh, assets. Uh, yeah, good point. So. Um... What we've seen in the past uh, is um, with the cultural significance, with the heritage trees, uh, with potential parking meters or anything that may not necessarily be front of mind, uh, and certainly with, um, with local fauna as well, uh, we've, seen, we've seen a number of different utilities and certainly municipalities to be able to deliver out information to excavators to say, guys, you're going to be digging around a uh, heritage protected area. These certain trees may have been around for 120 years, 220 years. Their root system may potentially leach out across different areas. So you need to be careful because as soon as you dig up the roots, tree dies. Uh, and certainly with, uh, with other issues that municipalities have faced, uh, certainly with um, insect problems, if you've got a high area around pestilence of weeds or even pestilence of insects, you want to make sure that you clean your machines properly before and after you go to sites. As such, uh, these, these utilities and certainly these uh, municipalities may potentially send out a uh, fact warning file to say, guys, um, make sure that you clean your, your machinery properly uh, before and after uh, because they don't, they don't want to spread the pestilence. They, don't, they, they want to try and help contain any, type of, uh, any types of issues. Uh, low, uh, significant uh, heritage significance, uh, certainly in Australia as an example, and uh, in New Zealand as well with the local Maori people as well, they may, the, the, there may be potentially some uh, dig sites or uh, artifacts, as uh, Jason might have mentioned before, that uh, they may not know about in certain areas. So therefore, 
if you're going to be digging around certain areas, it's good for the excavator to know there may be a permit process that, uh, that they need to go through as part of a cultural significance area, which no one may not know about what's going on, right? So right. Uh, that's, that's certainly something that, uh, that they need to know very early on. Uh, something else that uh, wasn't mentioned as well is from a general health point of view, uh, certainly in New Zealand, there's a town in Rotorua in the centre of the North Island that have a lot of geographic, uh, a, sorry, geothermal um, issues. Uh, so they have a lot of pockets of geothermal natural gas that's literally just leak out into the atmosphere in certain times. Now, if a dig site is happening around those certain hotspots, the person who's digging may not necessarily know. However, the municipality, the local municipality also, obviously they know. So they, in this area, in this municipality, they actually send out fact file whenever there's a, uh, a dig site that might be happening around these geothermal hotspots to let them know, heads up, warning, warning, red marks everywhere on the letter to say, you need to make sure that you bring your proper breathing apparatus or it might be a permit or whatever the case is, because sure, it's not an asset as such. However, it might be important for the person to make sure that they have the right breathing apparatus. Otherwise, it might be critical to their health. Right. So a lot of these, so, a lot of these issues yeah. uh, are apparent around in different parts of the world. So Andres, can you just tell us how would a um, an asset owner or a municipality or a government agency, uh, if they if if they have these areas, whether it be a tree or an environmentally sensitive area or whatever, uh, how do they take that one call ticket and trigger this process that you're talking about? How would they go about doing that? Oh, that's a great question. So typically what we end up using is leveraging off the power of the 811 system. Now, the great thing is that the 811 system, no matter what state that you're in uh, or what province that you're in, you'll end up getting a wealth of knowledge. The wealth of knowledge is people wanting to dig or break earth around the areas. Now, by collecting all that information using something like screen access, as an example, you can then use that information coming in from the 811 to say, John Smith wants to dig in the area. Uh, as a municipality uh, asset owner or, or utility, or whatever the case is, if you've got a GIS layer that says, I've got geothermal hotspots, I've got a uh, fire ant issue, or I've got uh, a local fauna problem, or whatever the case is, we can drill down uh, to, to, to identify those areas with, those, uh, with that digging area to then uh, send out information, send out letters, send out early warning notifications to that contractor to say, guys, heads up, clean your machines properly because you will want to uh, stop the spread of fire ants, stop the spread of certain uh, certain weeds. We want to protect certain local right. uh, fauna. We want to make sure, or potentially, uh, guys, you're going to make sure that you have to fill out a permit because this area has uh, heritage, cultural significance, or whatever the case is. So by using by using the 811 ticket, uh, asset owners, any asset owner can then use something like Screen Access to then dig into their infrastructure, dig into the information that they've got in their GIS, and then send out early warning notification processes. So really, as long as they can locate those on a map and they've got those in a GIS somewhere, you can trigger different kinds of warning for different kinds of facilities, right? Or different kinds of, yep. of these silent assets. Okay. Yeah, look, definitely. And the great thing is that even if you're a small municipality, like a regional municipality that may not necessarily have the latest and greatest GI system, you know what, that doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, one of the advantages that we can also build as a, uh, a full end-to-end -end service is we can help and work with the municipality, with a regional municipality, even a small one, to capture some of these significant areas, even as a general area, even as a hotspot, using something like Google Maps or whatever the case is, to capture that information and provide that as a service with the screen access service that we have as well, to then let them know what's going on. And the great thing is, not only do we let the excavator know there's a problem out in the field in the in a hotspot area, but we can also send a duplicate of that information internally to the municipality, to the small regional utility, whatever the case is, to say, guys, John Smith wants to dig in a problem area. And then that way they can spark on their own internal process. That's great. That's great. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you, Jason. And thank you, Andres, as well, for your insight on how these silent assets are protected around the world. 
Um, we would like to obviously hear from you, the, uh, the listener and the watcher here, to uh, let us know how you protect your silent assets today, what those silent assets are. Uh, please obviously follow our channel and comment below uh, for more of this content. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. Soon. Take care.